Hi, Daniela. I was just looking at your ticket. Um, I've got it up here. This is your screenshot, and I'm pretty sure I know exactly what the problem is. I replicated your trigger here in my workflow. Here we go. Oh, that's not it. <coughs> Excuse me. It's not going to mind. Give me one second. There we go. All right, so I have the same thing here. So the way filters work, at least the way I understand it, and it seems to work uh, by my interpretation, filters are always an and sort of um, situation. So if you're familiar with like some of the other places you have filters, they let you specify and or or. They don't give you that choice here. So everything should be treated as and, which means every condition that you give it has to be met. So usually when you have multiple filters, they're not going to be on the same custom field. So you might, the more common scenario would be one filter would be MB last purchase has changed to premier fitness, nutrition, PIF. And then you'd have another one that would be like tags, um, added, you know, whatever. Well, even that's not a good example um, because that's kind of a single event. Anyway, I'm getting in the weeds, but that that's why filters, that's why you typically have different types of filters because they're meant to be stacked. They have to satisfy all those conditions. So the way you have it, it's impossible to satisfy because you're saying if MB last purchase has changed to Premier Fitness Nutrition PIF, and it also has changed to Premier Fitness Nutrition, which can never be satisfied. It's one or the other or something totally different, but it can never be both. So here's how you get around that. Um, you can make the filter more neutral, get rid of that one, change this one to just has changed. And that's not good enough, I know, but that just gets you into the workflow. And then you say, you add a conditional for if else. And now you can get more granular. So now you can say, uh, you want to go into contact details and then standard fields. Um, this is where you can search for last purchase. <coughs> and now you can say uh, contains, which is one way to go. So you could either say contains, I forgot already, Premier Fitness Nutrition. So you could say So this could work because if if they purchase Premier Fitness Nutrition, it does contain that. And if they pr purchase Premier Fitness Nutrition PIF, it does contain this still. So that works for both. You have to be careful if you have other ones like Premier Fitness XYZ, and you don't want that to be triggered, um, then you, you can't use this. But this is one way to do it. Another way would be Premier, if it is Premier Fitness Nutrition. And then you could add another branch. So you could say if click that first oops got not have typos so I'm just going to give these the labels so you know what they are And then it would look like this. This gives you options to give unique responses depending on which one they went through. So you, you could add action steps here, like send them a text message. And then <coughs> maybe these guys instead, you want to send them an email or you send them a text message, but it's unique. Um, you get the idea. So there are multiple ways you can do it, but the way you have it is just impossible to satisfy. So you can either do one condition that works for both, like it contains, um, or another way you could do it is 
really even within this one. So you could just say or. So then you'd have it more like this and you could get rid of the second branch. So there are lots of ways to do it. You just have to understand the, the logic and what's meant by it. And the, whether it's and or or is always tricky and you have to be careful with it. And it's kind of just you get used to it with practice. But I gave you a few options on how you can configure it. And um, I'm sure one of them will work for you. So good luck.